November's election. We're in July. November is not far, but it's not far. And we can't be complacent and just say, you know, this is, it is what it is. And we can't change anything because we can't. This is what we want. This is what the majority of Ohioans want. This is what they want for their daughters and for their families. And as governor, we have to fight for that. And that was News Center 7's Molly Cohen reporting. Again, News Center 7 did reach out to Governor Mike DeWine, but his team rejected our request for an interview. And now, your Storm Center 7 forecast with meteorologist Robert Cotro III. First, we're going to say, take a look at this, Robert. This is a shelf cloud that was in the skies over a beach along Mexico's Gulf Coast. So what is a shelf cloud? Well, we've seen that a few times across our region, and it doesn't necessarily mean that destructive weather is to come, but it's usually associated with some stronger thunderstorms, not always severe, but you tend to find it. And so it, look, it looks like it has more bark than bite necessarily, although you should keep in mind when you do see those, you probably wouldn't be surprised to see some gusty winds or eventually that thunderstorm to move over and bringing maybe even some hail or a tornado. That's usually what that means is that, yeah, it's just a thunderstorm which is starting to bring some cold air across the region. Usually the outflow is what it's called. It's kind of this light blue you see on your screen. The outflow is some cooler air from that rain falling across the region, so it pushes that colder air out, but then it also interacts with some of the warm air that is forced to ride on top because warm air is less dense than cold air, and so as that happens, it condenses, turns into a condensation or a cloud, and so you get that cool little feature, and yeah, it looks a little ominous, and a lot of the times it's associated with a pretty strong thunderstorm, so you'll want to keep an eye out, but it doesn't mean that something dangerous is definitely going to happen, so always a cool picture when we see something like that, and as we see on our own radar, no thunderstorms, no shelf clouds, but we do see some rain moving across the region. Now, we did have a nice round of showers move through earlier and then a bit of a break. And then now you see the secondary waves were coming through. A couple heavy pockets in there. You can see the yellow. And then even in parts of Indiana, a little bit of red, a little thunderstorm activity. I wouldn't even be surprised if there was a thunderstorm embedded in some of these a little bit later in the morning. But expect a few waves of showers to definitely move through. You can see as we head into... Dark County, Mercer County, and down in Preble County, and then our Indiana County, some of those heavier pockets, and so it'll probably be moving here in Dayton if it isn't already. Looks like it's zoomed out too fast, so I couldn't really confirm that for you, but you can see definitely some mostly cloudy skies across the region, and that will help moderate temperatures as well. We're already in the upper 60s across a lot of places, so we're not going to see the cloud cover drop, or the temperature drop that much, one, because of the cloud cover, and then two, it's a lot more humid across the region. So some places are in the 60s at this point. Greenville's at 60, Winchester 69. Still looking at 71 in Dayton. And also we've seen the humidity rise quite a bit since even 6 o'clock. We had some dew points in the low 50s about five hours ago. Now they're rising in the mid to upper 60s. And so that indicates that it's a little bit more muggy outside. And because of that, it will be harder for the temperature to drop we're likely only going to drop into the upper 60s over the next several hours. You can see that. And it'll be, take a while to get there. We're already in the low 70s. So only reaching the upper 60s is pretty much going to feel like this all night. Muggy and kind of mild. You can see moving into next afternoon, temperatures in the 80s. It's actually a little cooler than average for this time of year. We're usually about 86. So you can see highs in the low 80s with the chance of some waves of rain. I think the, the wettest time will probably be in the morning, although we definitely will see some passing showers in the afternoon. But you can see it's already pretty wet out there now. And you can see throughout the morning hours, perhaps a chance of a shower, thunderstorm embedded in there, still raining perhaps by the late morning. Not constantly, but some waves of showers. Then by four o'clock, a couple isolated showers too. And then we move into Sunday where we are expecting a little bit more rain. So you can see quite a bit of rain across the region. Some places over the next two days seeing one to two inches perhaps. So we're definitely going to see a bit of a wet weekend. And some of us definitely need it. Now into the next seven days, it looks like we'll dry out a bit, especially as we get toward Tuesday and Wednesday, with high temperatures reaching the low 90s. And yeah, those low temperatures stay in the upper 60s, low 70s, and that means that humidity is here to stay for a little while. My favorite story of the day, this is Spike. And for a 22-year-old dog, he has still got a lot of spunk. Now his owners are trying to figure out if he's the oldest dog in the world. We'll walk you through what he's experienced in his life so far.